Hello, I'm Dr. William Schlosser, Washington State University School of the Environment. This is my classroom. You might remember this scene from 16 January 2022 when the elk herd's lead cow called for a migration move. Get the troops together, form a line, head count, call off, and remember to save with your traveling buddy. All together now, we only go as one set, no stragglers. I am in the lead. I'll give you five minutes. Buckle up, I want to pass that highway before sunrise. Follow me. That was the arrangement as we listened to those perfectly pitched cow whistle calls through the night. On schedule, the herd of about 90 elk left Kamiak Butte to move into the direction of Moscow Mountain, just 15 miles to the east. But remember, that was 16 January. Then, this raghorn bull wandered through the same path as the herd took, but he was a little bit late for the field trip. What? This was on 30 March. Hmm, I will not call my comparison perfect, but I looked at all the bulls that I saw on that migration track, and I did not see this antler design on any of those bulls. I think he just missed the call. <laughs> Oops. Think about this. He missed the herd movement led by the lead cow, but he did not rush to catch up. He stayed put on Kamiak Butte. Hmm, I wonder, did he spend the end of winter as a lone elk here? Well, evidently not. This cow elk appeared on one of our trail camera traps on 5 May. Look at her hip area. She is packing a calf. Huh. The bulge is right where it shows that she is within several weeks of giving birth. Remember what I said in that previous video that they give birth from mid-May through early June. Huh. This video is from the far north edge of Kamiak Butte. Now, just 15 minutes later, this lady is on the far southern edge of the butte. That is a purposeful movement through the woodland. This is the same place where the lead cow called out the migration move on 16 January. Hmm, interesting, but it is also near where that lone bull was passing through in late March. About four days later, she appeared on the north-facing aspect again. Huh, she is still walking around, making circles on the butte, looking for something to chew. Maybe looking for some companionship? Well, watch her hips again. The load she packs has moved back a bit. Calving is getting closer. Still, nothing seems to bother her lonesome trek. This trek is continuation of the previous jaunt, only about five minutes later on the same morning of 9 May. She keeps moving along to search for a specific place to give birth. Huh, I wonder, what makes the perfect birthing place when she is the only elk on the butte? Finally, she steps out in the daylight and 25 May. This is to the far northern reaches of the butte. She looks as though she is not carrying a baby on board logo anymore. Hmm, maybe this is not the same cow. She seems to have her ears and eyes open seeking for something. All of the other videos of our cow were taken at night to make a perfect comparison problematic. Hmm, what does she see and hear? She is looking to the camera. Huh, a budding movie star. <laughs> what is this? Smells different. How does it taste? She is licking the camera. Maybe she tastes it because it is green. Her breath is moist and she fogged up the camera lens. Curiosity is a strong trait with all these ungulates on the butte. She seems to be testing out the territory. In my experience, the cow elk will stay close to her calf. Deer will often leave their fawns alone for a few hours of the day, hoping not to leave a scent trail for the predators to follow. The moose cow stays near her kids and will stomp any intruder into the ground. Give them space. Seems that is good advice for all mothers of the wild. Just one week later, the 1st of June, we have two young bulls entering the butte. We have not seen these two before, traveling as a pair. 
Their antlers are in velvet, telling us loads about the current food supply. The branching of the antlers, this one with two eye guards stemming out. That tells us how their diet gives them the energy to convert shrubs into this velvety rack. Last year's spring and summer 2021 was a drought on the Palouse. This spring is moist and was met with warm temperatures. The plants rage out and our ungulates feast. These antlers tell us a great success story. These guys are seemingly new members of the Kamiak Butte crowd. Think about the other animals living here. Of course, we have mule deer, Oticolius hemionis, and their cousins, the white-tailed deer, Oticolius virginianus. These deer assemble in smallish family units, generally related within a generation or two. They give birth around the beginning to middle of May, plus or minus a couple of weeks. At the same time, just like the elk, these boys begin sprouting their velvety antlers. This started in about uh, February. But they grow, it seems, with a season of warm and wet climate here at Kamiak Butte. Through this entire series, think about how the populations of moose, elk, and deer interact on the same physical site. They share the space during spring. They look for the perfect birthing place. We have nearly 20 trail cameras set up along the game trails with traffic. It is therefore not surprising that we have seen no fawns or calves. Their mothers found an out-of-the-place nursery. <laughs> Good for them. As they age, the kids will join the family parades. Right now, they are resting in hiding, learning to eat the scrumptious greens. Keep your attention to the elk cow who stayed at the butte. I make a passing joke about maybe elk and moose will share a nursery? <laughs> I hope your mental reaction is to virtually shout no. <laughs> These ungulates are territorial when it comes to their offspring. You might walk by a fawn without seeing it. You may see an elk calf right beside its mother. This young cow is a yearling on the same springtime site as our older sister we have been following all spring. We share these videos from the vantage of a camera trap. Maintenance of those cameras is thanks to Eric, Bowie, Alex, Aaron, Ashlyn, Kate, Aiden, and so many more class students who are fully engaged to maintain these camera traps. We learn by watching to capture the meaning of animal behavior on this Kamiak Butte laboratory.